Randy, I have been having some thoughts about whistle playing, about your whistle playing, and, and there's too much for me to, to cram into a, a short lesson that we're going to have this afternoon. So I wanted to just get some of these thoughts out um, before we meet. So um, you spent the last six or eight months or something learning whistle. And this is what I, I consider to be like the trial time of any anybody's, um, the trial period of anybody's musical journey. Like trying to answer the question, like, am I a musician? Can I hack it? You know, do I have the talent it takes to actually become good at this thing? Okay, and, and what we're trying to answer there, we're trying to find a solution to five different questions or five different points we need to, boxes we need to check, okay, during this trial time. And you have done them all. Okay, and the boxes are, you need to get, first of all, you need to have access to an instrument. You need to acquire an instrument that's of a, a good enough quality that you're going to be able to play the music you want to play on it. Check. You have done that. The next thing is you want to connect yourself with a resource for learning. A collection of tunes, recordings, people on YouTube to watch, performances to see, and a teacher to kind of give you guidance as you learn, right? This connecting to the resources. Check. You've done that. Okay, the next thing you need uh, is you need to have some sort of um, uh, a, a base level of musical talent um, such that you're able to keep rhythm, memorize a series of notes and, and play them in rhythm and convey a song. You know, play the tune you're trying to play. Okay, be able to memorize a tune, sing it in your head, play it on the whistle. You've done that, okay? You started with Rattlin' Bog, but you've got a bunch of tunes now. So we know that you have the uh, innate level of talent you need to be a musician. Now, a lot of people get really hung up on this one uh, because they think that talent is going to be a limiting factor. Um, am I going to be able to be as good as Mary Bergen or whatever? But um, talent is a limiting factor, but usually only on like the highest, highest levels of like elite performance. Okay, but for people who just want to make music, make music with other people, share the gift, you know, create a little bit of joy or beauty, um, talent isn't actually a limiting factor. You need to have a little bit so you can make music, but you don't need to be a phenomenally talented person because all of the rest of this growth and learning is about the practice habits you make and the hard work you put in. And then at the very top, how talented you are, you know, kind of shows or limits you, but we're not worrying about that. You've got musical talent, okay? Um, the other thing you need um, is you need to have time to devote to playing and practicing which you've proven that you do. You do this every day, it seems like. You meet with me regularly, and every time I hear you, you sound better. You've learned a new tune, and you've told me about the playing you've been doing. So you've got space in your life to, to set aside time for whistle. So check, you've got that. And then the fifth thing you need, the fifth thing you need is uh, a goal, or at least a dream, or an idea of what you want this to be. Um, and you have expressed a couple of those to me, um, you want to, you know, continue to play music with your, with your daughter, um, or your daughter-in-law. Sorry, I can't remember at this moment. Um, you want to be able to eventually come to the Dima sessions and, and learn tunes with us and play tunes with us and sit in a circle with people and, and play music. I'm sure there are other images or vignettes or ideas you have in your head about what you want this whistle playing to be for you, but those are a few that you've expressed to me. So, You've got all five, all right? We spent six months figuring this out, but you've checked all five boxes. Congratulations. That means we know for a fact that you have everything you need to be a whistle player, okay? So what this should mean, and it will be an, a never-ending journey, uh, this should mean that you stop, uh, uh, don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt whether you have the ability to be, can I really be a whistle player or am I just faking it? Don't doubt, um, you know, not just your abilities and your talent, but 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 just don't doubt the dream, right? That I think the number one thing I see from students not uh, uh, becoming the players they want to become, it has nothing to do with time or talent or the quality of the whistle they're playing or any of that. It has everything to do with a lack of self-confidence or this belief that, they can't or shouldn't do that. That is some toxic negativity living inside your head. And maybe you don't have this, but almost everyone I know does. Um, that's just the way we are in this culture. You gotta stop that self-talk. So this, you've done the five things. You can picture it as like a stack of five little stones. You got your cairn of stones, you can set it aside. We've proven it, that you can be a whistle player. So now what you have to do, your job now, I mean, you're gonna be alive for what? At least two more decades. 
maybe three, you got a lot of time to play this whistle. So what's gonna determine whether you're a really great whistle player or something else is the practice habits you build right now. So for the next chapter of our learning together, I'm gonna keep sending you um, tunes to learn. We're gonna keep playing tunes together, but we're gonna spend time in our lessons only focusing on how to practice, okay? Because you've proven. You can write down the notes, you can learn the music, you can watch the things, and you can get connected to this and make it happen, right? So now my job, my only job, is to make sure you are learning good practice habits, okay? And, and when I talk about practice habits, I'm, I'm really only talking about being able to play slowly, and I mean like really, really slowly. Like if we're talking about Rattlenbog, we're talking about da, 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 ma, bam, maybe even slower than that, okay? I'm talking about being able to play your tunes phrase by phrase and stopping at the end of the phrase and then playing that phrase over again. Drilling your phrases is what I like to refer to this as. So if we're doing Rattling Bog, we're going stopping there. And again. And because what we need to do when we slow down and play phrase by phrase is we're making sure that there's no hesitation and no discomfort or no un, a lack of familiarity between what you're hearing in your head and what you're playing with your fingers, right? The whole challenge is hearing a melody in our head and wanting to turn it from a thought, an unexpressed idea, into a, a perceivable physical phenomenon, a physical event, okay? You hear Rattlin' Bog in your head, you turn it into actual Rattlin' Bog to be heard by other people or by you out in the world, okay, right? Out in the physical world. And there's a disconnect there. And all of our learning is about how to take a thought and, tra and have our body translate it into something that's real and physically perceivable, okay? And the only way we're gonna do this, we're gonna, we're going to, um, I don't know, clean out the conduit, the, the channel between your thought and your body is by drilling these phrases super, super slow one little chunk at a time, repeating them three, four, five, six times until they just feel really comfortable in your fingers, okay? So my job is to make sure that I'm just teaching you how to practice at this point because we've proven that you can do all of this stuff. You can learn any tune you want. You can learn any tune you want. I mean, that pretty much says it all. You can learn any tune you want. But if you wanna become a great musician, you have to learn the habits now. When you learn these habits, you're just gonna automatically become really, really great, okay? So we're gonna meet later. Maybe you'll watch this after we've, after we've met. This is my new approach for studying, for, for your studies with me now, okay? We've crossed into the new threshold that it's not about learning ornamentation, it's not about teaching fingering on the whistle or, or telling you what tunes you should learn. Because you figure all of that stuff out on your own. I mean, I'll, I'll be here to guide you through that. Of course, I'm not going to withhold information from you. But the main focus of our lessons is going to be getting into this really disciplined way of playing. Okay? And this is where we're, we're not really talking about whistle anymore. We're not really talking about Irish music anymore. Really, at the heart of what we're getting at is we're talking about focus. We're talking about self-discipline. We're talking about mindfulness. We're talking about patience, right? And all of these things, these, this is actually, if I may be so bold to suggest, this is actually a spiritual practice. And maybe not in, in, a, in a, a Christian sense, but, you know, mindfulness and focus and, and self-restraint or self-discipline, um, these are all, these are all spiritual, um, you know, these are all things that will help us walk a, a, a path that is more closely aligned with our higher, um, uh, you know, moral compass, with our higher value system, with wh whatever, you know, you have in your head that you want to be doing better or being better. And, and if this case we're talking about whistle, sure, you're talking about being a better whistle player, being able to play more tunes with better rhythm and clean ornamentation and a nice bright tempo. Um, all of these things are a higher value 
and you're trying to teach your, you know, your body or your daily ness, whatever this human existence is, to walk more closely in alignment with this aspiration that you have. So in that way, we're turning your whistle practice in from uh, a fun hobby to do on the side to a spiritual practice that's going to help you become a more mindful, focused, grounded, disciplined person. And in that way, your whistle playing is going to make you a better person in other areas of your life. I have this motto that if you fix your whistle playing, you fix your life. So that's what we're going to work on in the next few months. Uh, I just had to get these thoughts out before we talk because that probably took me like 10 minutes and that's, you know, a third of our lesson. I don't want to waste the time. So looking forward to seeing you, looking forward to continuing to um, help in whatever way I can to help you become the whistle player you want to be. See you soon.